Hey there, hey there, hello there to you, my design lovelies on Instagram, and hello there to you as well, my gorgeous design divas on Facebook. It's so good to be here with you. I'm Donna Hoffman. Hey they call me the interior design advocate. I'm getting reverb already, all kinds of things happening here in the studio. So they call me Donna Hoffman, and I'm uh, also, they don't call me Donna Hoffman. My mother named me Donna, married Steve, so I'm a Hoffman. Anyway, they call me the interior design advocate because I advocate on behalf of design lovers everywhere across the US and beyond to wipe out that sense of panic, that sense of disappointment, that sense of frustration when you are just not getting the results that you wish you could get, that you hope you can get, that you wonder if you can get. I'm here to tell you, girlfriend, when you use design strategy the way I teach it, you can get there. And that's why I have these amazing online courses at theinteriordesignadvocate.com. And when I am not coaching design lovers across the country, once you're here in our community, I call you lovingly design divas. When I'm not doing that, I'm running a luxury interior design company here in the United States uh, in the Philadelphia region. We have a lot going on in our company at all times, uh, designing for great projects, great clients, and teaching amazing women, savvy women, smart design lovers just like you. And every Tuesday, we like to put a pin in it here at the design studio, and I come out and I teach a lesson on something that relates to questions I'm getting or something that I think would be helpful to you. Something I want to do right off the bat is light my favorite candle. I forgot to do that. Here we go. Got to get the, uh, the Tuesday Facebook Live vibe going. Oh, it's the best. I love the scent on that candle. Anyway, every Tuesday at 4 p.m., we are here and I'm talking to you about you and your projects. I'm happy to take your question related to the topic I'll be teaching on. As long as I don't need to see a picture to be able to answer you well, glad to take your question. Okay, hang on, gotta do one of these, hang on. Feel a little tickle in my throat. All right, so what are we talking about today? Today we are talking about five tips to reignite a bland room. Five tips to reignite a bland room. So let's talk about why do you have, and I know a lot of you are spending, a lot of us are spending a lot more time in our homes now because of everything that's going on in the world right now. So if you have a room that's kind of meh, kind of bland, you could be noticing it more, seeing it more. So let's backtrack first. Why do you have this room that's kind of bland? Is it either, these are the four common reasons that I see. Is it either because you were scared or are scared? You were scared when you were doing it. So you weren't making any real choices that could enliven the space. You were kind of playing it real safe, right? So is the problem that you were scared? Is that why you got yourself into this pickle? Or is your room looking dated? Is that why it's looking kind of bland to you? Is it just in need of refreshing? Or is it a room that's unfinished? If it's an unfinished room, you got to finish it, okay? And is the problem that you're struggling with that your bland room is kind of hodgepodge? It's just sort of cobbled together over the years. You bought stuff way back then, and then you even inherited a couple of pieces, and some things are from other phases and moods in your life, and then you found some things in different furniture stores, off-price stores that just seem to kind of accumulate in your space. Are you dealing with hodgepodge design? So there are different reasons you might have a bland-looking space, but let's talk about some things you can do without going into a deep lesson, because I need visuals to really teach design, which is why I have my online courses. But let's talk about some hacks, some quick things that you can do if you have a space is pretty much furnished, is pretty much done, but it just looks bland to you. All right, first thing you want to do or can do to add some instant oomph to any space, and it's interesting, really savvy design lovers just like you seem to be afraid to step out in this one area. And what is the area I'm talking about? Art. Step out by way of really large scale art. I was just looking in one of my private Facebook groups at one of my students had posted a great room transformation she did inside of my, um, which course, is the design CPR course she's in, which is all about how to facelift rooms really quickly by leaning into accessory power. And she posted a picture of her before and after, great result. She said, oh, as I look at this picture, I realize that that the picture or painting that I have on that wall, she mentioned it, it's too small. And it really hits me when I saw it, when I looked at it in the picture, my, my photograph. And she was right. One large scale piece of art in that particular space would make that space so exciting. 
So if you want to do something to really add oomph to a bland room, look at a piece of artwork that you could possibly find a new location for, so you're not, we're not getting rid of things perhaps that you love and own, but what can you replace and replace it with something that's large scale, a big image over a sofa, a large canvas of, or something on a, on a blank wall. Large scale art makes a difference. I'm talking things that like 48 by 48, you know, 30, you know, 40 by, by 60. I'm talking big piece of art, right? Okay. So you want to add some instant oomph to a bland room? large scale art experiment you will love what you, the result that you get from that something else you can do real fast to, to up the gorgeous factor in a bland room just replace your area rug area rugs have tremendous power why because it's another wall it grounds your furniture it hits it in the center of your room which is certainly think of it center stage it's a power position in a room from a design perspective so you want something fast to do in a bland room Maybe you can replace that area rug with something that gives you a little more pop and panache. Something else you can do, depends upon your design style, this is going to be very general, but do not underestimate the power of the color black. Bring in some black with perhaps some accessories, maybe you can replace your window treatment rod into a dark rod, a couple of black accessories maybe uh, a little black and white pillow somewhere. It's amazing the power of black or black and white to add oomph to an otherwise bland space. Oh my gosh, totally obsessed with what, what black can do in a space. Great, great color. Something else you can do if you want, if you have a bland space and you just don't want to spend on furniture, you know what you can do? You can revamp an entire room and up the yum factor, the wow factor, change the vibe by changing out your accessories. You can. I was starting to talk about that course, Design CPR, Creating Perfect Rooms. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. It's low-hanging fruit accessories and their power tools. So if you want to do that, that's a great way to up the yum factor in a bland space. And something else you can do, if you have the dollars, if you have the wherewithal, because it's a little more complicated to do, but Changing out the window treatments can have a massive impact on a room. If your treatments are dated, they're just not right, too small. Um, window treatments are a little trickier to, um, to pick out and to do well. I, I get it. Um, it. It can be a kind of a, a, a dicier conversation. But I do believe that if you know what you're doing with window treatment proportion, I think you can do terrific looking things um, ready-made or semi-custom or custom. I don't think it has to be custom uh, to be able to do a quick refresher in a room if you know what you're doing and you know some great hacks. Now listen, I've got a great free workshop if you want about the power of accessories because I think they are design power tools. And I have put up a link to that in my, what, in my description on Facebook, Insta, I guess you have to just sort of swipe and find that link. I guess that's how we do it. That's what I'm hoping. That's how we do it. Anyway, lovelies, if you have a question about how to give a room that you're working with a quick facelift, if, you, if you're suffering from bland room, you've got a case of the blahs in a room, put your question in. I'm happy to take it. If you missed any portion, while well, I'm waiting for those to come in, if you missed any portion of this Facebook Live, you can always find us on YouTube. We're getting amazing traffic to our YouTube channel now that we've been posting all of these Facebook Lives. People are loving them. Being able to go back and find them, you'll find them as the Interior Design Advocate questions are coming in. And I also want to tell you that if you're not following us on our two different Instagram feeds, maybe you want to do that so you can have a little more TLC. At IDH Designs is what we're doing at our design studio, so you can see what we're up to, what inspires us. I've gotten a lot better now about taking you behind the scenes into the design studio, see what we're up to. Yesterday I showed you I was giving out champagne uh, to some people. And then if you want, if you're not following us on Inst on Facebook, if you guys aren't following us um, at Decorating.Genius, you're missing all of the teaching and coaching and inspo that we do there for all of our design lovers. So that's at decorating.genius. And you guys are already there because you're watching me there. All right, questions are coming in. So let's see, first, what, what are the Instagram peeps have saying to me? Dawn Sharrox is saying, oh, it's not a question. I saw the help wanted position on the IFDA site. I wish I was qualified. You're a wonderful designer. You're so cute, Dawn. Yes, we are hiring a junior designer right now. We, we just brought in a fantastic intern. She is 
adorable. Um, just, just like a little bundle of energy. If you if you follow us on our Instagram feed at IDH Designs, you can see you'll, you'll see Sharice, our intern. Um, but thank you, Don. I appreciate that. We're 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 seeing some some good candidates, so I hope to make a decision on that soon. So there it is. And then bracelets by Mary. Oh, somebody to get to know. Bracelets by Mary. She is asking, how do you decide on what? on the size of an image uh, uh, an image for the wall? Great question. That's a great question, Mary. I would really love to have visuals to show you proportion. Proportion is a place where a lot of design lovers fall off, fall off the, the ledge, right? I would prefer to see you on a blank wall go bigger than smaller when in doubt. I mean, listen, if you're purchasing a square canvas, they're usually 36 by 36, 42 by 42, 48 by 48, or 54 by 54. And it's hard to find those larger canvases unless you go Google, I think it's called My Big Canvas, or, my, or yeah, My Big Canvas, and then you can see different images that you can have done in different sizes. Um, Generally speaking, the larger the blank wall, the, the bigger a canvas it can handle. Um, over a sofa, I do like to see something, if possible, that's at least four feet wide if it's, if it's an eight-foot sofa, right, or seven-foot sofa. So hopefully that helps you as a quick tool without having visuals to share with you. Okay, before I take more Insta questions, and they're rolling in, I love that. Let me see who my what my Facebook girls have on there women, what my women have on their minds. And last week, we actually had a guy join us. It was good to have a Devo. I missed all the Divas, so we'll see what the questions are. Denise is saying, hello, lovely lady. Well, hello, Denise. Good to see you. Shelly is saying, hello from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Hello, Shelly, and hello from Diane in Florida. And Debbie from Alabama is here. Hey, the party can start. Alabama, when people from Alabama are here, I'm ready for the party to start. Lisa's here from Tennessee. Um, Lisa wrote, hell from Tennessee. I think you left off the, oh, Lisa. <laughs> Either that or there are problems in Tennessee. I think Lisa meant to say hello. Hello, Lisa. Lisa, I'm just teasing you, but you did leave off the, oh, but I'm fine with that. Anyway, Nancy's saying, wow, lots of viewers today. Oh, yeah, Nancy, this is the place to be. This is like party central here if you're a design lover. Okay, good afternoon from Birmingham. Another sip of water. We have more interviews that we're doing later today. I'm a little tired. I got to. Bulk up with more. Gotta hydrate. Um, okay, Tammy says she hadn't met me yet. Okay, I'm keep okay. Okay, uh, okay let's see. Um, hello from Missouri, Texas. Love black walls. Oh, Kim Owens wants to paint paint an entire wall black. I love it. Oh, you know what I just did in our design studio last year? Looks so good. Took the doors and the and the um and the molding black. I didn't do molding around the windows in black. But oh, let me tell you something. High gloss, the way to go. Okay. Um, Kim is saying that she likes a modern quilt hanging on a wall. That looks good, too. Yeah, in the right design style. Why the heck not? Lori is saying, I have pewter walls, a gray sofa. Oh, Lori is describing her interior. Lori, if you have to describe your interior and ask me a question, chances are good that I need to see a picture to be able to answer you. Pewter walls, chairs, added a blue-white rug. I needed to add a color that matches the blue and gray. Yep, need to see a picture there, Lori. Otherwise, I would do you a tremendous disservice. Uh, but I say that to you lovingly with a big hug. Um, Sunita is saying hello. More hellos. Hello, Sunita. Um, okay, Janice is saying, I'm bored with my verticals in my family room. Do you have any suggestions? Well, I'd want to see what the windows are in there, Janice. Um, I'm assuming you are you talking about a sliding glass door. I don't know. Uh, there's so many gajillions of options that you, you don't have to just do verticals, but I'd want to know more about what your, I just answered somebody about this um, today, actually. Somebody asked me a question about um, how to know what window treatments to put on their windows, and <sighs> window treatments are a big discussion. That's why I have a whole course in it. Um, I say that to you, not as a plug, because it's, it's just true. When you are picking out a window treatment, the things that affect that window treatment decision, like when people say, what do I put on my X window, my fill in the blank window, or my blah, blah, blah door, it's not about the window, it's not about the door. You will put, you will select your window treatments. Remember, design is very strategic based upon the window itself or door itself the surrounding windows and doors and what you're trying to do with the eye line, what the eye is seeing, the budget that you have, the design style that you have, and any constraints that you might have in terms of 
how a window or door is placed near a wall or other things that might affect what you can do in terms of how you treat that window, right? It's not just a, hey, you want to sweeten your soup, you know, add a teaspoon of sugar. It's not that, that direct a question, uh, direct an answer. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a deep dive. That's why it's, I have an entire course on how to pick the perfect window treatments, right? It, there's a lot to consider, but once you know those formulas and those strategies, all the wrong ideas fall away and you only see what you need to see. If you have a more specific question without my having to see a picture, you know, put in a follow-up. But that, that's all I've got for you for now based upon that question and what I know and don't know of your space. Maureen Schroeder is saying, if you have two large walls and you put one large piece of art on one wall, what do you put on, what do you put on the other wall? What do you put on the on the wall next to it? Suggestions, please. Maureen, I really want to see your picture. I, do you have to have something else next to it? Guys, there is, Maureen, A, I need to see a, a picture to be able to answer you really well and specifically. But guys, here's the thing. Negative space is so underrated by design lovers. Give it a higher rating. Negative space is a rest. It means there's nothing there. And that's with intention. When I leave an area blank in a room that I design, girlfriends, that's not an accident. That's not a, oh, I forgot to put something there. That is, no. I don't want to stop the eye there. I want to put the eye here, or I want to put the eye there, right? Where are you directing the eye? You put something up on a wall is to say, hey, stop, pause, and then move on, right? Do you need to have anything next to a big piece of art? Possibly not. Very, very likely not. But again, there's no one hard, fast rule um, I, in my own, in my own home, I have a piece of artwork and then I've got, I do have something next to it. Could be a great big floor plant, right? So I have to see the space to be able to answer you more specifically, Maureen, but hopefully that helps you, right? Think about what you always want to answer the question. Why, why am I putting a piece of art here? Why am I not putting a piece of art here? They both, you should be able to answer both of those questions. Um, and the answer is never, I forgot or I was afraid. It's always, I knew what I was doing. All right, so let's see now, here we go. Uh, what else are you peeps, gorgeous women saying? Okay, Westchester in the house from Renda Thompson, I love it. <laughs> Samir is here from Iowa. It's so good to have you guys all across the country. I feel like I have buddies all, all across the globe. I was talking to uh, one of my design divas in a Zoom call yesterday day yes it's only Tuesday I feel like it was yesterday was a long time ago and she was asking me some questions about my business and and I love what I do I love designing and I love teaching you guys and I told her you know running the interior design advocate brand it's huge it's a lot of work and she said Donna do you do you regret it do you regret starting the brand I said oh my gosh no I feel so enriched by your presence in my life and being able to teach I teach you about design I love seeing you move the needle when I see before and after pictures from my students ah, to this day still gives me the chills so so good to see you all from across the country joining for our Facebook live alrighty so Robin wants to add texture to the wall what are the suggestions Robin hold for it grass cloth do a great wallpaper why not that'll do some I mean there are hand pressed papers modeled kind of papers the papers that look like crushed quartz, papers that look like um, cork as well. I could really use, ah, here it is. Um, so adding texture to a wall, super easy to do there um, with, with, without doing art and, and just doing something really cool with, uh, with your wallpaper. And you can also frame out your wallpaper, make a statement that way, trimming it out. We're presenting to a client tomorrow and which bedroom are we doing this in? In a young man's bedroom, we're doing something interesting in the wall behind his bed, floor to ceiling, but coming in from the wall on each side, probably by, I don't know, four feet, we would just run a wide strip of wallpaper. Uh, so it really encases the bed and most of his two nightstands. And then we'll trim it out with a color, some sort of color will be applied to that trim and a really cool plaid, gentleman's plaid kind of wallpaper. So. I don't even have to put art on top of that. We're, we will, but we don't have to. We will if the client likes it, I should say. Um, okay, so then let's see. Becky is Becky Fox is saying she downsized to a garden home with the TV in the great room. What about artwork and what to do on the wall? Lots of dead space there. 
Becky, if I'm following your question, you want to put artwork above your TV. I don't think you should do it. Uh, and we just did a Philadelphia apartment where we did have a TV on a, on a wall above a media cabinet, and she was very boho. So to the left of that, we did like a little spray of four different pieces of art kind of jagged, um, you know, randomly hung. It looked really good. So you can do something like that. But I hate when, pardon me, too strong. Don't love when I see uh, people do like the symmetrical, I've got a TV, so I'll put a plate on this side and a plate on that side. No, no don't, don't do all that. A little negative space. And maybe on one side of the TV, there is a piece of art. I don't think you have to. How about just a great, you know, fiddly fig? Um, I'm having a fight right now with one of my fiddly figs. He's mad at me. I hope he doesn't drop dead from my accidental overwatering. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully that helps you, Becky. So put in a follow-up if you need to, if you'd like to. Shelly is saying, I am, oh, Shirley, excuse me, Shirley. Shirley's saying, I'm doing my bedroom over, gray carpet, gray beige walls, queen size bed. Okay. Um, it sounds like I need to see a picture to be able to answer you well. If you guys have to dis really describe your interior, the colors and, and so forth, uh, chances are I, I need to see a picture to, to answer you well, okay? So if you can make it a more, I don't know, general question, as in what would somebody do if you had a bed and you didn't know what to put above the bed? Something like that. Better question, okay? Um, uh, Sally is saying this time last year we were getting ready for the fabulous Design Diva Conference. Let's plan another one. Oh, Sally, that was that conference was good. Yes, I would like to do another conference. I'm so glad you liked it. I'm getting hearts and flowers on that, too. Um, Angela is saying, congratulations on your design award you just received. Thank you, Angela. It just arrived in the mail. It's that big red thing back there. Um, I'm going to post a picture of what I wore to the award ceremony one of these days. Because, Nora, I bought an outfit when I knew we were going to be, you know, winning this award. And uh, Spanx, the whole thing. And then COVID happened. So... The award ceremony happened online, so I thought, boy, never dress this way for a, an awards gala. But it was a real honor to receive the award from Lux Magazine, so thank you for your congratulations. I appreciate it. Um, more hellos coming in. Tasha is saying, can I do a cornice in a morning room and curtains in my family room, even if they are on the same wall? Yes, you can. Um, Sunita is saying, Donna, I am enjoying the Decorating Genius System. So glad I bought the course. Learning a lot from it. Thank you so much, Sunita. I am so glad. Can't wait to see what you're working on. Post pictures in your private in the private Facebook group. We're, re we're rooting for you back there. Uh, I like to say, you know, why DIY when you can DWO, decorate with others. It's so good to be able to design with other design lovers. Um, so Angela's saying, what, oh, what can I do over a fireplace? What do you prefer, a large TV or art? Such a good question. Oh my gosh, let me tell you, my design purists, my architectural purists, they don't want to see anything like a TV above a fireplace. They are about the architecture. They want art above there, right? Meanwhile, I have other design lovers who say, look, it's the 21st century. Electronics are where it's at. I don't mind seeing my TV. So I, I, I'm fine with either one. It, it's really a personal choice. But when it comes to where to put the TV in terms of height for viewing distance, if you, if you are sitting too close to that fireplace and the fireplace is too high, you have to push your neck up to watch, and that, over time, will cause neck pain. So just be careful when you're placing a TV over fireplace, and also make sure you are far enough off the heat box, the, the, the fire box, from a heat perspective, that you, you have the TV far enough away per manufacturer recommendations, okay, if it's a a heat throwing fireplace hopefully that helps you but okay in terms of um, art what do you put over there my gosh you can do a large mirror you can do a pair of things you can do a single item leaning and then you accessorize around it inside my course um, design CPR it is yeah I show different quick hacks quick setups for different types of fireplace design whether you're symmetric whether you like symmetry or asymmetry there are some quick templates you can you know follow for that but hopefully those art ideas quickly gave you um, an idea um, okay let's see GRE is saying what type of art is a good choice in a bathroom because of the humidity levels ah, GH GRE1 that's a brilliant question yeah. I'm sorry J, J excuse me JH GRE1 sorry I'm tired um, you want to avoid things there are things to avoid in the bathroom because of the humidity levels um, I wouldn't do an oil 
I am told by gallery owners not even to do a watercolor, anything that could be sensitive. I think you're better off doing something like um, what I call bridge price point artwork, something that's not uber expensive. It's it's maybe a, um, something from a, a catalog that's a printed something. Whether you, When I say catalog, if you go to your framer, local framer, say, hey, I'm looking for a, making this up, an abstract in the color green uh, that I want to put in my, my master bath, he, can he or she can take you to their catalogs and just look for images, and then you can frame that. Um, you, you can, I, I just wouldn't do high cost things in a high humidity bath. Um, I've done black and white photography in, in a bath, um, as well. So things to avoid are sensitive things, watercolors, and I would not do, um, an expensive oil painting. Okay. Or, or an acrylic, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but mixed media, I mean, if you wanted to do something made out of cloth and that sort of thing, I think you're okay. Um, yeah, and if it's not a high humidity bath, like a powder room or a guest bath that doesn't get a lot of traffic, then I think you can step out with some other types of art in there too. Hopefully that answers you. Okay, so let's see what else Facebook is saying. Is Facebook saying anything? More people joining. Tiffany, hello from Louisiana. Um, let's see. Can I mix, Tasha's saying, can I mix boho and farmhouse? Yeah, Tasha, there is a branch of boho that looks very farmhouse, very farmhouse moderny, very, um, oh my gosh, what is that many, what is that big store name, Steve, do you know, um, that, uh, if Katie were here, I don't want to make, what, oh, you know, it's, it's like popular with like the millennials and no, no, ah, text Katie, would you, tell her what, what was that look that Jess loved when we were doing her, um, It'll come to me. I'm sorry. I am wickedly tired. I think I shared with you I'm not sleeping so well lately. What? Um, anyway, yes, the answer is yes. You can mix farmhouse and boho. Okay. Anthropology. Anthropology. Thank, you, Thank you, Jennifer. That was it. Oh, my gosh. I'm scaring myself. Okay. Um, questions from people who have not asked questions yet. Let's see. Um, Deeb Lopez is saying, if I could add a very small French detail to a non-Frenchy bedroom, what would you suggest? Perhaps something black and white. Yes, totally. I love that. Um, my gosh, what could you do? You could do all kinds of things. You could do an asymmetrical hang on your drapery panels. If you have windows, two windows in that bedroom, that's a very French device, right? Where it's one panel on one window, one panel on another window. Black and white awning stripe. Oh my gosh, in a, in a big pillow on your bed. Fabulous. That would be an instant little bit of French that you're adding um, to a space. Um, you can do it with the artwork, too. Um, uh, so hopefully, and you can do it with your accessories also. But um, I think that a black and white awning stripe would be the first place I would go. Second place, if you're into um, uh, toile, de, de, de joie, de joie, toile, I just call it toile because I failed French. I didn't fail French, but my French teacher didn't love me. Um, the t there are some black and white toiles that are more modernized that look kind of cool that you can, you can do that as well. But I would go right for the black and white stripe. That's the first thing I would do. Alrighty. So let's see. Gail is saying, what should bedroom, cur what should bedroom curtains match the furniture or the carpet? Yes. And yes, Gail, your, your, everything should be in agreement, but your bedroom curtains can either relate to the bedding directly, or they can relate to the carpet directly, or they can relate to the wall color directly. They can relate to pillows on your bed directly. So there are a couple of ways you can slice that apple. Um, so I like the way you're thinking. Good deal. Um, let's see. Live and learn and renovate is saying, any general guidance for decorating two-story walls? Yeah. You're not going to like this because you guys always want to put a bunch of stuff on that upper, that upper level. I generally don't. I, I generally design and fill the space that would be the first story in terms of the walls. And then I let the, the, that wonderful rush to that second story just be what it is. Don't put stuff up there. You want to drive the eye to the focal point in the room, which is the fireplace or the windows, right? Let there be maybe a wonderful light fixture up there in that two-story room. Or maybe you did like two really cool modern fans or whatever you have up going on up there. 
Um, and that's it. And then you want you want to direct the eye to what's happening on what would be that first floor. I don't I don't muck up and zhuzh up the that upper floor. Um, I think it looks very model homey when you do that. Um, now, are there exceptions to every rule? Yeah, there are. I mean, I can see a moment in a super um, urban, contemporary loft kind of something. If you had something really cool, you were doing like a some sort of installation that went from the first story up into that second story. Cool wall sculpture that kind of moved up the wall. Yeah, you want to go high and dramatic, you can. But in a residence, I don't. I don't tend to do a lot on that second story. So. There it is. Okay. Fernanda is saying textured wallpaper on the ceiling. Yes. Why not? Patterned wallpaper on the ceiling. Take a wallpaper from the ceiling down over one wall. You know how great that is? Um, when I when I sat through the, the award ceremony last week, and P.S., I could have invited you guys to log in and, and attend. Who knew? Should have done that next year if it's still on. If I ever win something again, I should say it that way, and it's online, I'll invite you guys. You can see what cool stuff designers are doing across the country because this work that was being honored in addition to ours the work that was being honored by other designers was so gorgeous and there was one designer who took this really interesting edgy black and white wallpaper it was kind of like black slashes on a tea stained white kind of background and they ran it it was in a dining room they ran it from the wall up over the ceiling it was this amazing modern space Ooh, so good so to answer you yes Put a textured wallpaper on the ceiling, do just that, or if you want, in certain spaces, you want to get a little edgier, go from ceiling down to one, down through one wall. Mm, so good. All righty. Um, more hellos. Okay, Carol is saying hello from the San Antonio NKBA Texas South Plains chapter. Carolyn, is that anywhere near Austin? I've got buddies, design buddies in Texas. I don't know Texas well, terrain-wise, I like geography-wise, but I know I love it down there. Always have a good time when I go to Texas. Lori is saying, what's a classic accent color with gray and blue? What is a classic accent color with gray and blue? A darker blue or a lighter blue? Or darker gray or a lighter gray? Or you could throw in um, a little bit of teal with that as an accent color. I would avoid yellow. I would avoid red because I wouldn't throw a primary color against another primary color. It can look kind of, kind of ju juvie, juvenile. Juvie is what, what they say in the industry for juvenile furniture. I don't know why they call it juvie, but they do. So I wouldn't do that, Lori. Um, I would, uh, yeah, I think you could, uh, and so it's a, it's, it's a question of what blue shade you have. If it's a real grayed down blue, gosh, you could throw plum into that. There, there's a, you could throw, a snudge of blush, maybe. I'd have to see it, though, okay? I think, Lori, were you trying to ask the question earlier? Did I say put it in a more gener a general t context? Because if you did, that was brilliant the way you just did that. Thumbs up to you. Sue is saying, what, what would be proper to place under a TV mounted on the wall? Place a table under it, furniture? Um, I would do a media cabinet, either floating cabinet, or you could do floating shelves. Or you could do nice, big, thick, chunky shelves if you're more modern. Or you could do a media cabinet. Okay. Uh, I think I got that. I think I got that. Um, okay. Dawn is asking a second question. My bedroom is blah. How do I decide if I want darker walls and lighter colored furniture or the opposite? Dawn, I want you to look at images that you love of rooms that you love. What is your design fingerprint? Because I would hate to tell you, do dark walls. And then we look at your design fingerprint and realize you hate dark walls. You really like light walls and you like splashes of depth somewhere else in your space. Knowing your design fingerprint, that's something I teach inside my Decorating Genius course. Your design fingerprint is bigger than your design style. It lives underneath your design style. It's how you need things like color, pattern, texture, placement, light, shape handled. Um, and if you don't know your design fingerprint, woe to you, because it is so easy to get caught in the trap of Pinterest or how's, um, or like, you know, like for example, that really cool room I described with the wallpaper with that went from ceiling down to the, down to the wall. You might look at that and say, wow, that is so exciting looking, but I couldn't live. But, and then if you tried it in your own home, it would drive you nuts because maybe you don't like pattern broadcast everywhere, right? So your design fingerprint, Dawn, I want you to get to know it, all right? If, I think you're in one of my courses. If you're not in Decorating Genius, I think you should take it, Dawn, because I think you'd rock it. I really do. All right, last two questions according to Senior Hoffman to my left. 
Alrighty, so Sally is saying there are great TVs that look like framed art. Yep, and some look like mirror uh, as well. Um, and Lori is saying, can't wait to redecorate using your, my strategies. Lori, I'm so glad. I love it. Good. If you're one of my students, Lori, you can post before and after pictures in our private group. So if you're one of my students, can't wait to see what you're working on. Um, Anna is saying, just did black and white photography and it looks great. I know. I know you can do architectural photography. Guys, you can take your own family photos, have them converted to black and white, blow them up into different sizes, make a really punchy, striking uh, photo wall there. I thought you told me last two questions. You're throwing a lot of questions at me. Lynn is saying, I have a two-story family room and I have nothing on the upper floor. Now I feel like high-fiving myself. <laughs> well, Lynn, I'm... High five and you're right back. Atta girl. No, nice job. You smart design DVU. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Jane is apologizing for being late. It's okay, Jane. If you missed any portion of this and you want to catch up, you can do it. Great, great segue. By finding us on YouTube, the Interior Design Advocate, and you can catch up on anything that we've been doing here. Um, okay, last question. Let's make it a goodie. And as I get ready for the last question, what are we talking about next week? Hoo, hoo, hoo. Ready? Next week, we're talking about kitchen design. Why is it the toughest renovation you'll ever do and live through? Kitchen design. Why is it the toughest renovation you'll ever do and live through? So you can bring your kitchen renovation questions with you. Okay, here we go. Last question. It's a goodie. Um, dun, 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 dun. My home is 28 years old. This is Laura. I walk, I walk up my two-story winding staircase and there we have a shelf with an outlet. What is it used for? I don't know. Everybody, we should go to Laura's home and take a look at that. I don't know. I, I, I'm going to answer one more question because I don't even know how to answer that, Laura. Without seeing a picture, I'd have to see a picture to answer you, babes. Sorry, Laura. Okay, um, Amy is saying, I'd love a smaller version of a living wall, plants in a frame. Wow. Any suggestions as to where to find something like that? No. If you're, if you're, if you're, if you're crafty, I don't see why you can't create something yourself. Maybe you hire the guy to create the thing that will house it all. And then you just get out the glue gun and start doing some, you know, I've seen things done like that. Um, in um, commercial settings. I don't see why you couldn't do that on your own if you're a talented, do-it-yourself kind of person. Uh, oh, Carolyn is telling me she's about 60 miles from Austin. Carolyn, if you know Robin Bond, one of my buddies, one of my interior design buddies, she's fabulous and she's down there. Okay, Bracelets by Mary. This is truly the last question. I'm getting tough. She's saying, how do you choose art? I'm boring. And what about shiplap? Guys, I'm afraid of shiplap because I think it's so trendy. I think I, I wouldn't go heavy in on the shiplap moment. If you're going to do it, I'd do it on like a barn door or do it on one wall in an area that is it maybe a key area, maybe in a bathroom. I'm telling you like I see it. Now I'm telling you what I think, not what I think you want to hear. Um, how do you choose art? That is a big, that is a little question, but a really huge, huge, huge answer. I should do a course on artwork. Uh, I wrote a great blog post hmm, on art. I don't remember what feed it was on. I don't remember if it was on Interiors by Donna Hoffman or the Interior Design Advocate. You, I, check out those websites. Um, I wrote a great piece about selecting artwork and what it takes, to, you know, what, what you have to consider, how you have to consider context. And we also have a great artwork cheater guide. Um, if you want to just, it's, 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 it's for a fee, it's 27 bucks though. Um, and that is, how do you get to that? Does, uh, Steve's going to put the link up. Um, I, I delve into that, uh, topic in that, in that manual. Um, it's about a 20 page ebook or manual. And with, with choosing artwork, you have to consider context. You have to consider size placement. Um, and also, I think if you really want a, a high end look, I think varying your medium a little bit so everything isn't black and white photography or everything isn't a colorful landscape behind, a, behind glass. Um, but context is important. For example, in a little girl's room, you know, a framed little lollipop could be adorable. Um, if you're doing like rustic farmhouse, 
or farmhouse modern a black and white um, photography you know blow blow up could be really great if you're doing a transitional something with a a very uh, but you're trying to push it into a more modern vibe you know a big colorful abstract so context is important subject matter is important that that's what I mean by context all right so listen guys I've got it get out of here because we have more interviews scheduled this afternoon and this evening um, for our design company. So next week, see you back here, Tuesday at 4 p.m. We're talking about kitchen design, why it is the hardest, the toughest, the worst renovation you'll ever live through. But oh, when it's done, mm, will you be happy you did it, all right? So you can bring your kitchen renovation questions with you next week, or if you know somebody who's about to embark upon a kitchen reno, send them to our Facebook Live so we can help them too. All right, lovelies, I'm sending a hug to each and every one of you. Hope you're hanging in okay, COVID and beyond, and I'll see you next week. All right, bye guys. Hi, this is Donna. Thanks so much for watching. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and comment below so I know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe to the Interior Design Advocates channel so you don't miss any of our great content.